Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you how to install a bat fan. This specific one was purchased from Costco. It looks super nice and beautiful. It works amazing. It's very nice and quiet. And it also comes with a moisture sensing switch that is going to be a huge help to control mold and mildew in any bathroom. So the brand is called Breeze Easy. As you can see it here, this is the packaging. It's one of the best selling bath fans. It actually is my favorite. So if you're interested in learning how to install this, please make sure to sit down and watch this video till the end. So after opening the package, this is what you get inside the box. I always like to start by connecting a Lumix electrical box connector to the body of the fan. As you can see, it's fairly easy. All you need to do is to push it from the outside of the box toward the inside. There is a ring that needs to be tightened up from the inside portion. This is so when we feed the wire through this, we can tighten up these screws on it and it's going to stay in place later on, which I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds. This is the bathroom location where I want this bath fan to be installed. I like to pull my tape measure and find out the exact center of the ceiling. So this way when I install it, it's going to look super nice and centered. I like to keep the actual fan in place and mark around it so this way I know where exactly to add my blocks of wood. And then I cut myself a piece of wood to fill this space in between these two floor joists and then I fastened it using two screws on either side to keep it nice and strong and square in place. Now it's time to put the actual body of the fan in place and fasten it down to the beam and to that block of wood that we just installed using two screws. I drilled a hole into that floor joist and fed my electrical wire through this so I can connect it to the actual body of the fan. I used my electrical wire stripper to cut down the insulation from the outside part of the wire. After removing the insulation, I pushed it through the actual body of the box and then I tightened up those box connector screws to it so it sits nice and snug in place. Now it's time to use a staple and secure that wire to the actual floor joist here. I like to leave a bit of a slack for the wire. That's because down the road, if they ever replace this, they have a little bit of uh, wire to play with in case the wiring location for the new bat fan in the future is gonna be located on a different spot. Now it's time to connect our electrical wires. This part is fairly easy. All you need to do is to connect the green ground wire to the green and the bare wire that came from the feed wire that we just installed. And then we're gonna use this wire tie to connect them all together. Make sure to give it a pull test just to be on the safe side and make sure it's not gonna come loose. After the ground wire is connected, it's time to connect the white wires together and then we can connect the black wires together. It's very important to use good quality wire ties. It is extremely important. It's gonna be a fire hazard if they come loose in the future. So the key is to use good quality wire ties and make sure to give them a poultice to ensure they're connected properly. I always like to use some kind of an electrical tape and tape up these wire ties to the actual wires just to ensure that they're not going to move. And also because it's located in a bathroom, no moisture is going to get to the actual wire connections. Now it's time to tuck those wires all the way to the top portion of the box. And then put this cover back inside. There's two slots on the sides of the box. You can kind of line them up and push this all the way up. When it goes all the way in, it kind of snaps in place and you can have a feel of it. After this, I like to remove the actual fan from the body of the box. This is going to just protect this against any dust in the future when I'm going to be installing the drywall here. There's only three screws holding this thing in place. All you need to do is to open them up and then pull the actual fan out of the box. Now it's time to connect the other end of the electrical wire to the junction box. I use my wire stripper again to remove the insulation about eight inches from the actual wire. And then I feed it through the junction box and tighten up that screw on it. This way it sits nice and secure in place. Now it's time to connect that ground wire to the ground screw into the junction box. Just make sure to wrap it around that screw clockwise and then tighten up the screw on it. This way it's not gonna come loose in the future. Now it's time to put all the wires in one bundle and kind of push it back as far as possible to the inside part of that junction box. I kind of wrap it in a way that looks like an accordion and then push it all the way back. This way my wires are not gonna be uh, kind of kinked too much and it's gonna be easy to pull them out when the job is done. I like to push them as far back so when I'm using my drywall router, I don't accidentally cut the wires. As you can see inside that junction box, I marked the location of the fan wire. So I know where exactly it's located later on when I'm connecting the switch. And as you can see, the wires have a little bit of a slack and they were stapled correctly to the actual studs. 
In order to make my duct or pipe connections to the actual bath fan, I have to make a hole through this block of wood so I can feed my duct through this. The bit on my hole saw hit a nail and broke off so I couldn't use it anymore. So I decided to drill four holes on four corners of this and then I used my sawzall to make some cuts and then I used my hammer to knock it off and make this opening the way that you can see it here. For this project I'm going to be using four inch galvanized ducts. As you can see this is how they go together. And then I like to use aluminum tape on the seams so they're airtight and they don't come loose in the future. Now in order to vent this fan properly we have to make a hole to the outside of the house just so we can feed this pipe through that and connect it to the bath fan and whenever the fan runs it's going to shoot all that air and moisture from inside the bathroom to the outside of the house. So in order to do that I use my hammer drill to drill a pilot hole through this rim joist to the outside of the house. Now this is how that hole looks from the outside part of the house. Now I have to use this bigger drill bit and my hammer drill to drill this and make it bigger. So I just run this drill bit for a few minutes and then I take it out and use my hammer to chip off all those broken pieces inside. This way my drill bit is not going to be messed up and if the house is a bit older you're not going to mess up the rest of the bricks around it. So you got to be extra careful, make sure to take your time. Don't rush it, run your drill bit a little bit and then take it out. Then use your hammer and chip off all those broken pieces and continue until the hole is completely made. These bits normally go through the concrete and break very well but through the wood they're not going to be that good. So in order to make it a bit easier for myself I use a regular hole saw on the inside part of the house and I drilled out that extra portion of the rim joist that has to come out. Now we have a complete hole. So this is the outside part of the house. As you can see, it turned out pretty nice and beautiful. This is the type of vent cover that I like to use for this application. As you can see, it has that flap, so it's not going to allow any colder to come inside. It's pretty nice. So I pushed this vent cover through the hole that we just made, and then I lined it up with the brick lines just to make sure it's sitting nice and perfect. And then I drilled the pilot hole. In my case, this is a 3 16 hole and then I used the top corner screws to hold it down in place. I repeated this for all four corners and this is the final result, this is how it looks like. Back to the inside part of the house, I got myself some insulation foam and I applied it to all around this pipe to make it nice and airtight. This is how it looks like after about an hour. Now it's time to make the rest of the connections all the way to the bat fan. I like to use aluminum tape on all my seams to make it airtight and nice and perfect. I like to use my tennis snips in order to cut these pipes. It's fairly easy. Just make sure to wear gloves because when you cut them, they're pretty sharp and chances are you're going to hurt yourself very bad. At the very end, I had to use an elbow to connect this pipe to my actual bath fan. It's very important to tape up all your seams. And another thing to keep in mind, I'm planning on using some kind of a bath insulation for this whole cavity all the way to the outside of the house. I can't emphasize this enough, it's very important to insulate this pipe. I'm planning on using some kind of a bath insulation all around this pipe and completely fill up all this area all the way to the outside of the house. If you don't want to do that, there's some kind of wrap insulation that you can buy from Home Depot, Lowe's and all other hardware stores. Make sure to get that and wrap up this whole entire pipe with it, it's extremely important. The reason why I recommend that is because you're going to have some kind of a condensation built up on these uh, pipes. That's exactly what happens when you take a cold drink out of the fridge and leave it outside for a few minutes. As you know, there's some moisture build up on it. It's going to happen here also in summer times. The cold air from the inside of the building is going to travel through this. So to prevent any kind of a mold and dampness, make sure to insulate your pipes before you put your drywall up. It's time to remove the screws from the fan box and pull it down. There's a bracket that has to be installed at this point and then we can push the fan box back in place and put some screws in it. It's very important to make sure that the fan box is level at this point. If the fan box is not installed nice and level, what happens after a while, the bearing on the actual fan fails and it's going to start being very too noisy. So to prevent that from happening, make sure to double check for level in every direction. If the rest of the stuff is done in your bathroom, it's time to install the drywall. So in order to cut the fan opening, I like to use my router and take a look at this, see how satisfying this is. 
After the drywall finishing and the painting process is done, I get myself a rag and clean up the entire area inside that box, making sure there's no debris inside it. We need to put that fan back inside the box and secure it using those three screws that we removed them previously. Now it's time to connect the electrical from the fan to the box. After that, we put this drywall cover on top of the fan and push it in place. On the back side of the fan cover, there's two springs. You need to squeeze them and there's two slots on either side of this fan. You just need to push these springs inside those slots and then push the whole cover toward the top or the ceilings and then it's going to snap in place. Then you can make that final adjustment and it's ready to go. So this is the fan switch that comes inside the box. It also has a moisture sensor built into it. So let's say if somebody is using the shower and they forgot to turn on the fan, this switch is going to sense that and turn on the fan until all that moisture is gone from the bathroom. The black wire from the switch goes to the black wire that comes from the main electrical panel. The white wire from the back of the switch gets connected to the whites. This is the neutral wires basically, we need to connect them together. The green wire that comes from the back of the switch gets connected to the bare copper wire that comes from the junction box. And the red wire that comes from the back of the switch gets connected to the black wire that is going to the fan. Again, use very good quality wire ties and make sure to give them a poultice to make sure that they're sitting nice and secure in place. If you're not too sure about the electrical part, make sure to hire an electrician to take care of this portion for you because you don't want your house to be on fire. There you have it guys, this bathroom fan is installed and it's working perfectly fine. Now if you're interested in learning how to install more of the Costco products, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also if you want to learn how to finish up the rest of this beautiful bathroom, please make sure again to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification button. There's a lot of cool videos coming this way, make sure not to miss them. Thanks a lot for watching this video, till next time, peace.